Hi, everybody. This is Todd Krieger. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about this topic, very important topic. I'm titling it Beyond the Bedroom, Exploring Intimacy Through Non-Sexual Touch. I uh, talk a lot about non-sexual touch, non-verbal behaviors, uh, how to connect physically without necessarily having sex. Uh, for one thing, uh, we know that uh, typically women need to feel close to feel sexual. And it's not always the case. Every time I say this, is always an exception to the rule. Sometimes in heterosexual couples, I find it's the man who kind of needs a little more emotional connection, a little more non-sexual touch, a little more affection. But more times than not, it is the woman. And the man is typically, um, you know, goes right for the sexual touch. Now, I am all for sexual. I'm all for sexual. Have fun have amazing sex, do it as often as you would like. But that's not all that intimacy is about. It's one of the myths. It's a real dangerous myth because we oftentimes miss the uh, beauty and the impact that non-sexual touch has on feeling more intimate, more connected with each other. And so again, especially for many women who want that and need that, who want to feel close, who don't want to feel like we're rushing to climax, that's very important. So I'm sure there are physiological reasons. I'm not going into that for this. There's hormonal reasons. I'm not going into that right now. I'm just saying that we need to make a priority to have non-sexual touch. And even though that happens a lot in the beginning of relationships, people will hold and touch and hold hands. It, it does fade for a lot of couples as time goes on. And then they only touch when they get together for sex, for sexual intercourse, to be more specific. So non-sexual touch, I mean, what are we talking about? Let's talk about um, something I do first, and then I'm gonna get a little more general, but I'm gonna start more specifically. For couples that have really lost their way, have really not been touching for a long time, they just, have become like roommates. This is what I recommend. I do this with my clients. I recommend it to anybody here who fits into this category. And even if you don't, it's a, what I'm about to tell you is a great little exercise. It's called Sensate Focus, created by Masters and Johnson's, a couple of sex therapists many years ago, many decades ago now. Uh, and it's still very useful, especially for couples where they've stopped touching. And that is you give uh, five minutes to your partner, where you you caress them, I will model it. <laughs> You're not massaging. Slow, not fast. Slow caress. Slow caress. You could use your hands anywhere on the person's body. I would recommend, though, especially if you haven't touched in a while, avoid the genital areas, the erogenous zones, the women, the breasts, and the vulva for men, typically the groin area. At least for at first, then you can do whatever you want. But I, I'm just trying to say that we want to emphasize non-sexual touch. And what's happening when the, the person who's doing the touch for the five minutes needs to really focus on that sense, that touching, kinesthetic sense of touching. What does that feel like to me? So I'm not just touching. I'm actually noticing how it impacts me, how it feels to me to touch my partner um, in various parts of the body for five minutes. And then after five minutes, you switch, and then you get touched, the person who did the touching, and the person who's receiving the touch is not just laying there, is really paying attention, is focusing on how good it feels. Now, if something for some reason doesn't feel good, then you communicate it. Oh, your hands are too dry. Can you just use some moisturizer? I mean, communication is always important. Uh, it's not an endurance test. You want it to feel pleasurable and, and nice, and you want to notice it, deeply focus and notice on what it feels like to receive the touch. So the person giving notices what it's like to give, the person receiving notices what it's like to receive, five minutes each. It, it's really a beautiful way to slow down together. You don't have to just use hands. You can use lips, you can use tongue, it's just the idea of touching, and you're not doing it necessarily 
for any kind of sexual arousal, even though that still might become a byproduct of this, but that's not what we're shooting for. We're shooting for just non-sexual touch. So I use this uh, sensate focus a lot uh, with people that have that problem. I use it for other reasons too, uh, with, with uh, people, especially men, but also women where sex itself has become too performance oriented. But I'm not gonna get into that right now. The whole idea though is takes the performance out of it takes uh, the need to have sexual um, uh, arousal and orgasm, takes it all out of it. It's just the touch and it makes, it really is nice. It's very nice. I had one couple that said, oh, that wasn't good. They all like it when they do it. Even if at first it might be awkward if couples haven't been touching. Now, aside from that, which I use as like a clinical approach, but it's good for anybody. There's just the various things we could do to touch hold hands while you're walking um hold hands while you're watching a movie some of this seems self-evident but sometimes especially when you're out of the habit you got to reach for it and notice just like in sensate focus notice how nice your hands fit together um hugging hugging you know hugging is is amazing you know just do just hug and you're hugging just to feel close you're giving hugs you're accepting hugs just do just hug a lot and if you're one of these people that tend to break from hugs always first see if you could hang in there a little longer and allow yourself to relax more into the hug and take it in these are especially for people that have these avoidance attachment styles where they have a hard time letting themselves receive love loving words but also loving touch from another person so you want to kind of expand your capacity to receive hugs kissing on the forehead kissing on the forehead is such a beautiful thing that's you know just if if your partner's ever kissed you on the forehead you know what it's like it's just there's a warmth there's an instantaneous warmth that happens and in, in, in when, when you kiss the person on the forehead, a lot of times it's also um, just being able to, you know, when you kiss the person, if you hold their neck as you kiss, so they, they're, they're feeling your hands, you're, they're feeling your hands on their neck and your lips on the forehead. And that's it. You just do it. That's it. You're not shooting for anything else. A lot of times your partner will really enjoy that and take it in. Now, another category of non-sexual touch is playful touch. A playful touch can be a nice little pat. It doesn't have to be a spank, but a little pat on the tush or a pat on the back even. Okay, love you. You know, there can be, you're at a restaurant or even at home, you start to play footsie under the table. This is, this is important. You know, it does oftentimes change the dynamics of a relationship when you're playing like that. So playful touch, take your shoes off, play footsie softly. Just playful, soft touch, uh, touches. Stroking hair. Um, and then, you know, just, I would say it doesn't have to be sexual when you're just doing, you could do a kiss on the mouth, but it's just a kiss on the mouth, just a little peck on the mouth. You're not really doing the make out. I'm all for it. Like I said, make out, fondling, all that, but I'm not talking about that here because those are more sexual. Now I'm, I'm talking about just the non-sexual touch where there's a warmth that's created and it is, it sets the foundation for hot. It sets the foundation for passion. Uh, the, the only other thing that I could think of that I might not have mentioned, and there's probably other things I'm not thinking about is just massage, massage, but it's the massage just to, uh, give your partner 
uh, a sense of you touching and, and helping them feel good. Okay, now it's different than, than the um, uh, sensei focus, which is not a massage, it's a little more of a caress. But massage can be good too. So all of these things, from holding hands to massage and kissing the forehead and playing footsie under the table, um, you know, all these things contribute to a passionate relationship. We want play, we want connection, touching connection, we want warmth. So that's really it. It's just a nice little talk to maybe a little reminder to do that. I think that oftentimes we just get out of the habit. We got to think about it. If you really have a hard time remembering that because you're just slipping into a, a, a pattern of avoidance, use your phone, set reminders, touch, touch my partner. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I want to touch my partner. Do whatever you can. Now, obviously if you're a couple where there has been plenty of touch already and that's part of your habit, of course, keep going. Uh, this probably this talk is more for those that have just uh, stopped doing that in a consistent way. And consistency is important. You don't just do it once in a while. You want to do that often, daily, more times, you know, multiple times a day. It's reasonable. It's easy. It doesn't take much time. It takes seconds. It doesn't cost any money. Enjoy it. That's what I wanted to say. This is Todd Krieger, making the world safe for love.